reason I even have a voice is because my story has never been just mine. It has always belonged to the village, a family heirloom from my ancestors who fought for their lives so that I can fight for ours. This is how I know that more than anything, our stories have the power to change everything. Why else would this country delight in our silence and be content with leaving our history out of the narrative? Why else would they worry about us coming together in protest and in prayer? Why else would our colonizers come for our language after taking our land? Our stories are not shiny ornamental fixtures meant to uphold heritage months. Our stories are the blood we did not lose in the war against our liberation. They're the fire that refuses to die. Our stories are not unique. They're just urgent. My story is just me preparing to be the kind of ancestor that our children can read about one day and say, wow, she really did try to come for everything that was due to us. All of us are ancestors in training. The clock started long before the grief and violence swallowed us whole this year. I am angry as hell, but I am tender with you and with the long road towards freedom because our children will wonder what we did to ensure their survival. And I wanna be able to say, we came for systems more than we came for each other. We chose to be in complexity instead of simply in community. I wanna tell our children that we stopped fighting for more representation and a seat at tables that could care less about our cultures, our names, or our lives. I wanna tell them that settler colonialism came for our islands, but that all of us, from Asia to Oceania, fought to put indigenous lands back into indigenous hands. I wanna be the ancestor who says, we knew the root of this violence and the empire, imperialism, and militarism it comes from. The white supremacy that disguises it so that we never say its name in the soil it grows in. But I wanna name the soil it grows in without flinching because I'm not willing to mask this moment in anything but the truth. And the truth is that it is easy to say stop the violence when we think it started with us and not with systems that have been coming for our people for centuries. It is easy to blame each other more than settler colonialism, anti-blackness. It is easy to get loud about the violence against our elders and not the violence against our water, against our islands. But I'm not convinced that easy is our legacy. I'm not convinced that a heritage month will heal us. I'm convinced that our children are watching. They are listening to what we stand against and what we stand for, watching who we hold accountable, who we do not, and if that includes ourselves. It is hard to see that all violence is state violence, but I see it and refuse to whisper it like it's a secret because I'm trying to be the ancestor who is loud as hell about ending the violence of poverty, of militarization, of deportations, the ancestor who was led by indigenous sovereignty and black liberation more than by American values, the ancestor who knows that it's hard to have hope in the face of ongoing violence towards everyone we love. It's hard to have faith that things can change when it's 2021 and we have so much work to do to get to a better world than this no one. Walls, no walls, no no but it's also hard to lose hope as our collective liberation is forcing us to come alive, is forcing us to keep going. The thing about liberation is that we may not agree on how we get there, but we get there together like our lives depend on it because they do. Grace was right. Now is the time to reimagine everything so that one day when we look our grandchildren in their faces, we can say, we were afraid the entire time that we were fighting for the world you deserve but we did it anyways. We did it afraid. We did it in struggle. We did it for the culture. We did it for you, the way our ancestors taught us how. We did it this way because nothing else came close to freedom. <laughs>